My name is Michael. I'm an alcoholic. I'm glad to be here tonight. I needed a meeting. I was thinking, you know, we used to have this chef that uh, cooked all these fancy dinners and all these fancy foods and used a lot of sauces and things. One of the things he liked to cook with was alcohol. <laughs> Sherry, rum, cognac, you name it. He used to have this special cabinet above the fridge where he kept all his bottles, his private stash. And one night, I came downstairs. I couldn't sleep very well. Things weren't going too good at the ranch. So money problems, stress, the usual. And I came down to make a sandwich, and I was just about to open the fridge, and I saw the cabinet. And I opened it up, and there, right in front of me, was a brand new, unopened bottle of cognac. I got this incredible feeling, this uh, incredible urge to have a drink. Just one. Just one, I could handle it. Two years of sobriety down the drain, along with all my friends, the ranch, my life. But every day I see that cabinet. And every day it's waiting. Waiting for me to take that one small drink. No, I talked to him last night. He said he was going to meet me here. How's the new job coming? He says it's great. I think he's really starting to make some changes in his life. I saw him on the seawall a couple of weeks ago. He looked great. Yeah. I think I'm going to give him a call. Maybe he had to work late. taking his dog to the kennel yesterday. I guess he didn't feel like letting anyone know why he did this. He, uh, have any family? Just Chester. His dog. How long have you known Jerry? A little over a year. I met him through our support group. He didn't have many friends. The sun's coming up. You should uh, go home, get some rest. Sign 6-1. 
sick of covering for you, that's why. You're sick of covering for me? What about last Wednesday night? I saw you sneak out after lights out. Shut up, you yeah. both of you. Quit it. <laughs> Who are you meeting out the woods again? Your boyfriend? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Pick a jeep stick. Stop. Okay, Chester. Come on. Come on. This is your new home. Get to your chores. What happened? Fight. Dix and Peggy Jean this time. She nearly strangled him. Who started? Well, Dix was joking around, and then Peggy Jean, you know, pretty easy to rile. Yeah. Never stops. What happened to you? I thought you were just going to the meeting. Jerry killed himself last night. What? I thought things were picking up for him. Me too. I should have done something. What could you have done? I don't know. Well, of course I want to come back. Mm-hmm. I know. Sort of like the Brady Bunch gone bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I can't wait for Friday night. It's good to hear your voice, too. Okay, I'll buy a new dress for it, okay? Okay, bye. Special occasion? Yeah, um, an old friend in town for the week. So, where were you? You know, they were at it again. Dix, he's the instigator. Full of rude comments and pranks. He's kicking a drug habit. It isn't that easy. And Peggy Jean, you talked to her and you talked to her, and it's in one ear and out the other. Dix said she snuck off into the woods last night and met her boyfriend. I'm not sure what you're doing here is fine and noble. When do you, when do you throw the towel in on these kids? So I find that this law is at work. When I want to do what is good, what is evil is the only choice I have. My inner being delights in the law of God, but I see a different law at work in my body, a law that fights against the law which my mind approves of. It makes me a prisoner to the law of sin which is at work in my body. Why isn't this gate fixed yet? Dick snuck off during his chores. He was supposed to fix it. Yeah, I know. Then why didn't you keep an eye on him? There's more than one kid on this ranch, Michael. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Because I was tired, that's why. Oh, it's that six o'clock bell, man. Come on, you gotta lose it. I don't like getting up early either, but I do it because I made a commitment the ranch and to the program. Yeah, well, uh, the rest of us will love to make a commitment to uh, sleeping longer. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, Sergio, you got it. You're gonna be leaving soon. Back to the city. The same environment that got you hooked on drugs in the first place. You ready for that? I don't know. Why don't you tell me? No. You tell me. Hey, you're the shrink man. You're the one that's supposed to tell us what's wrong, remember? I can't change you. Only you can do that. Yeah? Well, what if we don't want to change? Then you're going to end up right back in jail or worse. Oh, man. Don't start preaching. Then maybe you should clean up your act and people wouldn't have to preach to you. I thought you were going to be different. But you're just like everyone else. Peggy Jean, we're not finished. Hey, over here! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Hey. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Back around. Hey, 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 h
Hi. Rachel, right? Yeah. Hi. Did you give Michael my message? Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Things have been really hectic around here lately. Well, oh, the reason I called was to tell Michael that Howard Dayton is looking to make a donation to a local charity. The Howard Dayton of Dayton Consolidated? Yeah. Well, he's read about the ranch and he's seriously considering giving a donation. Well, why didn't you tell me that on the phone? Well, I thought Michael should hear about it first. Anyway, he's sending his personal secretary out to come look at the place, see how it's run. When? This afternoon. What? There. Stalls are cleaned. We're in trouble. Start from where we were found on our knees. Hold your head from moving around. Your eyes are fixed on something that you have found. It's not for me. And if you say, Wash the Is Alice in their place? Just a minute. All right, it's for you. Uh, can I ask who's calling? It's her ex-husband. Michael? Oh. Hang on a sec. I know. We'll have Vic take them out for a hike in the woods, and that way the place will be nice and quiet for when he gets here. But that's not why he's coming. He is coming to see the place in action, especially the kids. Well, I don't know. I mean, these kids, they're not very adept at making a good impression. Well, you never know. They might just surprise you. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go change, okay? You, um, stay out here at the ranch? Um, uh, yes, I sort of moved into the guest room. Oh.
Uh, yo, man, could you uh, spare some change? What for? I'm hungry. I want to get some lunch. You hungry? Come on, I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, uh, why don't you just give me the change and I'll go get the lunch, huh? Sorry. Hey, what the hell's your problem? My problem? Yeah. I just asked for some change. It's no big deal. I know. To buy some lunch. I said I'd buy you lunch. You don't want it? That's fine. You think you're better than me? I didn't say that. Well, you don't have to. I can see it. It's in your look. Yeah. All right. Screw you. <laughs> Caroline there, please. Michael from her support group. What? Well, when will she be back? No, I'll try later, thanks. Hello, Mr. Coffer. Welcome to the ranch. Come on, I'll show you around. And this is the boys' bunkhouse. We stress togetherness here, friendship. The kids work together, helping one another, forming bonds that'll last a lifetime. Are you sure this is gonna work? Hey, no problem, man. Doesn't burn on this is dry, right? <laughs> This is the gym. As you can see, it also serves as the library. That way the boys can exercise their minds as well as their bodies. <laughs> What's going on? Pot roast. Pot? You got pot? You can blow it for all of us, man. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't go telling anyone, right? They'll send us back to detention, man. Let's shut up. Go. Listen, just keep your mouth shut, right? Let her go. And next, we'll show you the ranch house, where most of the daily activities take place. What's that smell? You never know. They may surprise you. Uh, mineral water, bud. Excuse me. Hi. Hi. You were standing here alone, and so was I. Everyone else in here seems to be paired up. I think we're the outcasts. Or the lucky ones. Huh. Diana. Michael. Hi. You staying in the hotel? No. This passing time. You? I'm business. I'm from Dallas. First time in Vancouver. How do you like it? It's beautiful. It rains a lot. But the people are nice. Are you married, Michael? Was. Me too. Ten years I was a housewife. And then one day I just said enough. And my husband, he couldn't understand how I could have needs and desires that had absolutely nothing to do with him. So I moved out, got a job. And your needs are being met? And my desires. Would you like to dance? Sure.
Would you like a drink? Sure. Vodka. doing here I came out yesterday Howard Dayton was thinking about making a donation and uh, he sent his secretary out to take a look at the place yesterday yeah Eleanor forgot to give you the message to call me I um I waited up for you most of the night in case you came in Allison called she said you hung up on her all right. I'm sorry to hear about your friend. Jeez, I've been so concerned about you. We're all concerned. Where were you? Michael, the kids practically burnt the ranch house down yesterday. They didn't burn it down. They were just being kids. Uh, they were drying marijuana in the oven. And in all likelihood, they probably lost a major donation from Howard Dayton. Well, we don't know that. Coffer said that Dayton will more than likely want to see the place for himself. Are you kidding? After what happened? Michael, you have a responsibility to the ranch. The kids need you here, not, not running around God knows where. Eleanor, this is not a very good time for a lecture. Yeah, well, Vic is outside right now, running the kids through one of your obstacle courses in the woods. I think you should get out there. I need something to eat. Your breakfast was two hours ago. Michael, you can't allow your personal life to interfere with your professional life. What personal life? Where are you going? 
take a nap. You belong outside with the kids. I'm tired. I need some sleep. Michael, what is going on? Michael? What? It's 12.30. They're ready to start the group session. Michael, please, they're waiting. They're coming. Give me a break. I told you not to do it. Hey, I've done it hundreds of times before. What were you going to do, smoke it? Duh. What do you think, stupid? What about you, dicks? You going to smoke, too? Yeah, I probably would have. What are you going to do, preach to us again about making a commitment? Maybe you're going to run off again. Yeah. Where the hell you go, anyway? Things heat up around here and you take off. I have to get away. What if we took off to get away? We'd be right back in detention again. Take it easy, dicks. No, I want them to tell us. Where the hell were you anyways? Yeah. You look like you've been up all night. Yeah, where were you, Michael? I mean, what the hell's bugging you? It's a group session. Perfect time to air it out. I don't want to talk about it right now. Bad drunk. Too easy, man. Come on. Never let us off the hook when we don't want to talk. Yeah, cough it up. Where were you? Why don't you tell Session's us, Michael? Over. Oh, oh, fine. Great. Session's over. It's not that easy. Where the hell were you? Had a girl. There you go. Clearest way into the universe is through a forest wilderness. John Muir. Thought you might like to go for a trail ride. You and me? And the kids? Thought it might do us all a lot of good. Instead, young lady. Good luck to you, Harry. Tell us, man. I went into the city yesterday and I drove around. I went to the park. And I did some thinking. I ended up in the hotel lounge and I met a woman very beautiful intelligent woman and, uh, and we danced and she brought me a drink 
And I drank it. Then I had another one. And another one, and another one. And I got drunk. Then we went up to her room. Michael. But it didn't mean anything. I didn't even, I, I didn't even know her. It's more like a, a feeling. It was more like I was trying to prove something. Prove what? That I'm human. That I have desires and needs and wants, just like everybody else. That I make mistakes. But I'm not allowed to make mistakes. I'm supposed to have all the answers. I'm supposed to help people. I'm supposed to keep people from... But I don't. And that realization hits me sometimes. I get real isolated. And I get really angry. slept. Instead of turning to my friends for support, I opted for self-pity and for that I am truly sorry. It's okay to make mistakes, Michael. We all do. But admit them. Learn from them. But move on. Don't let them drag you down. What's it all about? Does this ranch make any difference? Yeah. Ready, Dixon? Let's do it. You help me. <laughs> Where did that dog come from? I don't have a clue. I didn't know he was an alcoholic. Yeah. But like he tells the kids, it's not where you've been that matters. It's where you're going. You know, I was just going to go back to the city. But I got an idea. Why don't we do something for him? Like what? Let's make a few phone calls. Yeah, Rachel. That sounds cool. Caught me in, man. Great pen. See you later. Hi, John. It's Eleanor James. Hi. No, I'm not calling to complain. I, there's something I want to ask you. 
Now that is something that would interest me. <laughs> Great. I'll see what I can arrange. Right. Then he took the kite line in his hand and went groping down one of the passages on his hands and knees, distressed with hunger and sick with bodings of coming doom. That's it for today. Tomorrow we'll get into chapter 32. Up and at him, guys. Dix, you're going to dinner, bud. Evening, Mike. <laughs> Reed, you're not supposed to bring the next batch for another week. I got some friends that want to stop by and say hi. Come on over and introduce yourself to the kids. Hi, I'm Claire. I'm in first year at UBC, majoring in business. I was at the ranch last April. Hi, Claire. Sam, I was at the ranch a year ago. I've been cleaning sober ever since. Right on, Sam. My God, Susan, how are you? You were here, what, February? Uh, good to see you. Ah, well, you get one of them all, Michael, but you sure did with these. Yeah. Hey, Joe, you keeping out of trouble, man? Good to see you, man. Sweet little lady in my backyard. She looking shady with a credit card. Up the wall to my back door, she said. Hey, mister, could you lend me some more? It's always... Rachel, I... I want to thank you for all of this. It wasn't just me, Michael. Everybody helped. Yeah. The staff, the kids. I know, but the idea had to originate from somewhere, and knowing you, I... Stepping out? No, actually, I called my friend and canceled our date. Really? Do you want to dance? Yeah, sure. Who paid for all this? Oh, I just waved my magic wand. Ah. Like surprises. Catches the true essence of people. Oh, Mr. Dayton, this is Michael Terry. Welcome to the ranch. What are you celebrating? Who knows? Is uh, this an example of your unorthodox methods? Don't ask me. They're the people that threw all this together. Hey, Michael, want to dance? Sure. Nice to meet you. Uh, feel free to hang around and grab something to eat. Well, I've seen everything I need to see. <laughs> Come on, ladies, the night is gone. This donation's really going to help out. Couldn't have come at a better time. Eleanor, about the party. Rachel and I are friends. Yes, I could see that. I mean, that we're just friends. That's it. Well, why are you telling me this? Well, I just thought that you should know. But, um... Your relationship with Rachel really doesn't have anything to do with me, does it? No. Uh, nothing at all. Sorry.
Good luck with these three. They were at each other's throats the whole way up here. Far for the course. <sighs> Tracy the pickpockets, not so bad. But these other two, especially the kid, you're gonna have your hands full with him. Smile. That's a keeper. Hi, I'm Michael. Welcome to the ranch. 